Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we're going to be looking at Section 351, specifically the transfer of services. We talked about Section 351 in general in the prior session, so if you have any any concern about Section 351, please view the prior recording. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional level. So you via LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should create a LinkedIn. This way you can grow your professional network. If you're a Facebook user, you can like my Facebook page. YouTube is where I house all my lectures. You want to make sure you subscribe, you like my YouTube, share them, put them in playlists, let the world know about them. I also have a Twitter account and a website. On my website, I do have offers. For example, right now, Becker CPA Review is offering an unlimited access to the to the best CPA course out there. So this is unusual. Becker never ever had unlimited access. Now they do have this offer. I hope you take advantage of it. Just visit my website. So today we're going to be talking about the transferring of services under Section 351. This section require a prerequisite. Prerequisite of what? Prerequisite of knowing what is section 351. So I'm gonna cover section 3, 351 in a couple minutes here, but if you need any explanation, I have a 25 minute explanation. So what is section 351? Section 351 is when a shareholder or shareholders, more than one, more than one individual, notice my, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, art uh, skills are not uh, very good. They transfer property to a corporation and in terms, the corporation gives go, gives them stocks, ownerships. So what happened is this, when you transfer property, generally speaking, when you dispose of the property, you have, determine if, you have to determine if you have a gain or a loss. As long as you control after the transfer 80%, of the corporation, there is no gain and no loss. So as long as these individual, these two, and it happens to be the, these two, it could be more than two, as long as they contribute property, and right after the transaction, they control 80% of the corporation, although the property will have a gain, but it's considered an extension of themselves. So when they contribute the property, let's assume they contribute the property with the basis of 100,000, but the property has a fair market value equal to 150. Well, technically speaking, we have a gain of 50,000. Well, the gain is not taxable. Simply put, they don't have to pay taxes on the gain because they did control the corporation. So as long as they belong to this 80% group, as long as they qualify for the 80%, they should be in good shape. So this is the idea behind section 351. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about here is when those individuals contribute services. Now we already know about property. What happened when they contribute services? Well, generally speaking, services is a form of bartering. What does it bartering mean? It means I will do something for you and you'll give me something in return. Well, guess what? Bartering is taxable. So when you provide a service, so let's assume I, um, I'm going to paint your house and you're going to forgive a loan or I'm, uh, you're going to give me some sort of inventory. Well, that's bartering. That's taxable to me. Okay, same thing. If I provided a service, so if I provided a service, so let me just kind of, let me add a third individuals. Let's assume those two individuals, they have a lot of money, and that's me. So that's, I'm the accountant here. Here we go. That's me. So there we go. We need to form a corporation. We're going to go ahead, team up together and form a corporation. Individual A, individual B, and the third individual is me, who happens to be a CPA. Now, these individuals contributed property. Well, that's fine. And, um, and I contributed services. That's all what I contributed. Guess what? My services is considered bartering because I did not contributed money. Okay, I did not contribute property. So basically what happened is I am providing a service. As a result, the company is going to pay me money. What the company is paying me money. Okay, so I'm not contributing cash. I'm not contributing my own cash. I'm not con contributing property. What does that mean if I am providing only services? So let's assume I only provided only service to start with this example. If I'm providing only services, then guess what? Then when they do the 80% test, I cannot be included. What does that mean? It means let's assume individual A 
contributed asset and they got 50% of the corporation. Uh, individual B contributed property and as a result they have 10% control now and I provided 40% worth of services and I, I got 40% worth of the company. So that's equal to 100%. All three contributed 100%. So guess what happened here? Since I contributed only services, notice since I contributed only services, I cannot be counted. What does that mean? It means A and B, they control 60%. Okay, that's all what we can do. We can say A and B control 60%. Well, 60% failed the 351, section 351. Therefore, the property that A and B contributed is actually taxable because after the contribution, they did not control the company. In other words, I cannot say, well, what about me? I contributed 40%. Since I contributed only services, I cannot be counted. So simply put, if you transfer only services, so now we're going to go from only services to services and property, but this is the idea. So if I, if you, if I contributed only services, then the contribution is not counted toward the 80% control requirement. So simply put, this is what I did here. I provided my CPA services, and guess what? A and B, they had a taxable transaction. What happened if I contribute both property and services? Now I'm contributing services, but I'm also contributing property. The question becomes how much property in relationship to services? Well, simply put, I cannot just contribute like, you know, uh, my, uh, my laptop and expect uh, to be counted toward the 80%. So here's what happened here. Shareholder contribution will count toward the 80% if, now if you contributed both, here's what's going to happen. We're going to look at the fair market value of the property you contributed. So we're going to look at the fair market value. And let's assume, let's assume the fair market value for the property you contributed is $10,000. Then, as long as the fair market value is greater than or equal than 10% of the fair market value of the services. So you have to have some property contributed. And that property, to, to for you to be counted as part of the 80%, it has to be greater than or equal to the fair market value of the services. So let's assume the fair market value of the services that you provided. Let's assume you provided services worth of $50,000. So you provided services of $50,000. 10% of $50,000 is $5,000. Well, well, so this is $5,000. In that circumstance, in that circumstance, you're, uh, you will be counted toward the 80%. Why? Because you, you're the fair, fair market value of the property that you contributed is greater than or equal to, uh, to 10% of the fair market value of the services. Let's assume you provided services worth of 200,000. That's 10%. That's 20,000. Now that's 20,000. Well, guess what? You did not contribute enough enough property to offset the services. So, in other words, your contribution of property is very small in comparison to the contribution of your services. Therefore, you cannot be counted. So, the fair market value of the property has to be greater than or equal to 10% of the fair market value of your services. Don't worry, we're going to work a couple examples just to show you how this works. But this is the basic idea. So let's go ahead and start with the first example. Let's assume A contributed property and, and uh, as a result control 60% of the company. B contributed only services, control 40% of the company. So 60% to A, 40% to B. Well, let me ask you this. Is section 351 applies to A. So simply put, A contributed property. Section that obviously the service is going to be it's going to be taxable to the individual that provided the service. But would section 351 applies to A? And the answer is no. You might be saying why? Because if this individual only contributed services, then they cannot be counted. So A only controls 60 percent. So the transaction after the transaction, A controls 60 percent. Section 351 does not apply. So A transfer property and B only transfer services because B only transfer services. His stock owned 40 percent is not counted. So the 40 percent cannot be counted. OK, does A and B only control 60 percent? So together, when they form this corporation, B cannot, B ownership cannot be counted. Therefore, 60% does not 
reach is below 80 percent therefore section 351 does not apply so a whatever property they contributed if there's any gain they will have to go ahead and uh, and recognize it okay and b obviously will have ordinary income let's take a look at another example okay we have we're gonna just ch change this example a little bit we have a contributed sixty thousand dollar in property control 60 percent of the corporation control 60 percent of the corporation b contributed one thousand dollar in property thirty nine thousand in services and we gave b 40 percent so together they own 100 percent a control 60 b control 40. Is se what section 351 applies was section 351 applies to a was section 351 applies to a because or for that matter b because also b contributed property well what do we have to do here well b contributed both property and services but for the for the property to be counted well what do we have to do the fair market value of the property has to be greater than or equal to 10 percent of services so let's see so the fair market we're going to assume this is the fair market value of the property because this is all what we have and 10 percent of the property of the of the services thirty nine thousand times 10 percent equal to three thousand nine hundred well a thousand is less therefore we cannot count b toward the 80 percent control well in this circumstances then guess what section 351 does not apply therefore a will have to pay a will have to pay taxes the fair market value as i showed you thousand is less so b contribution is not counted therefore together they own only 60 percent therefore the section does 351 does not apply a and b would need to recognize any gain on the property transfer so here they have to both recognize gain okay let's change this example a little bit a contributed sixty thousand of property um, and received sixty percent of the corporation okay and they own sixty percent right now b contributed ten thousand in property thirty thousand in services and control forty percent of the corporation okay so sixty percent to a forty percent to b with section 351 applies now well let's think about it we're going to compare the ten thousand to 10 percent of the services 10 percent of the services is three thousand here the ten thousand of the property is greater than 10 percent of the fair market value of the services and guess what under this scenario section 351 would apply what does that mean if section 351 applies it means whatever a contributed okay on this property it's if there's any gain it's it's not taxable same applies to b so a transfer property and b transfer property and services the fair market value of the property is greater than 10 percent of the fair market value of the service thus b contribution is counted therefore a and b together they own 100 percent of the stock and section 351 applies okay a and b don't have to recognize any gain on the property transfer in other words they don't have to recognize any gain because section 3 51 applies okay let's take a look at another example we have a transfer property of 80,000 control 80 percent of the company well I can stop right here I can tell you right here what does that mean it means section 351 applies because a controls 80 percent but let's keep going B transfer property of a thousand services of 19,000 and B control 20%. Well, what's gonna happen here? A control 80, B control 20. With section 351 applies, as I told you, section 351 applies because that's it. There's only A by themselves control 80%. Well, A transfer property and B transfer both property and services. Even though the fair market value is is less than 10 percent of the fair market value of b contribution so obviously this is 10 percent is 1900 so 1000 is less it doesn't matter okay although b contribution is not counted the 80 percent of the stock 
here for A will count because it's a transaction. So A and B don't recognize any gain on the property transfer. They don't recognize any gain on the property transfer. Now B will have to have an income of uh, 19,000, but for the property, they don't recognize any, any gain, okay? Let's take a look at one more example. Um, hopefully, but you understand how services work, okay? We have Dan and Patricia, who are good friends, form Crane Corporation, then transfer land worth 200,000 basis of 60. So basis, let's, just, let's start with Dan. Then we're gonna look at the basis, basis of 60 for 50%, 50% in this, uh, of the stock of the company, Patricia transfer machinery worth of 150 adjusted basis of 30. So Patricia, the basis is 30 and provide services worth of 50,000 for 50% 50 stocks. So in addition, in addition, uh, she provided $50,000 worth of services and she got 50%. Now, the first things we wanna know is, did Patricia contribute contributed enough property that Patricia 50% share can be combined with Dan? Well, to, to know this, what do we have to know? We have to compare the fair market value of the property she contributed, which is worth 150, is 150 greater than 10% of 50,000. 10% of 50,000 is 5,000. And 150, the, the, the fair value of the property, is greater than 10% of the services, so we can combine them. Therefore, together, they own 100%. So guess what? Will the transfer qualify under Section 351? And the answer is... Yes, it does qualify because we can combine Pat's contribution with Dan and together it's counted toward the 80%. Why? Because the fair market value of the property that Patricia contributed is greater than 10% of the fair market value of the services. So she contributed enough, which is enough to be counted. That's what we that's what we can say. Right? What are the tax consequences to Dan and Patricia? Well, for the property, there is no gain. Uh, because notice, uh, without if, if it's not counted, Dan would have had one hundred and forty thousand dollar in gains. Okay, because Dan contributed a, a land worth two hundred thousand with a basis of sixty. That's a gain of one forty, but that's not going to be counted. Patricia would have a gain of one twenty, which is the fair market value minus the basis. But remember, Patricia would still have to pay. Will have fifty thousand dollar of ordinary income because the services is is counted it's counted it's taxable the services is taxable for her okay so we're just gonna kind of start introduce the concept of basis then we'll have a basis of sixty thousand and patricia will have a basis of uh thirty thousand for the for the for the machinery plus fifty thousand of the services so basis of patricia and the stocks will be eighty thousand will be 80,000. And the next topic we're going to cover in this uh, in this uh, chapter is the assumption of liabilities and we're going to start to talk about the basis, basis to the shareholder, basis to the corporation because this is important. Basis is important because when you eventually sell or dispose of the uh, of the stocks down the road, you want to know where your basis are. So the next topic we're going to look at is when there's an assumption of liabilities, when you contribute both liabilities and assets and how to determine the basis. If you have any questions, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Study hard, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam. And the reason I broke this recording into two topics, because some students have problem with understanding services. So I kept this topic separate. So hopefully you will get it. Okay, you will get it. Good luck and study hard.